first thing I think about when I hear the word Pop-Tarts is yummy. The pantry at my Nana's house. My childhood and being very happy. The one word I would say is nostalgic. For 60 years, this toaster pastry has dominated the breakfast market. Transcending generations, a symbol of convenience, nostalgia, and innovation. And Pop-Tarts is showing no signs of slowing down, despite decades of pushes for healthier alternatives. In 2022, the product brought in nearly $1 billion in U.S. sales. That's an 8.7% increase from the prior year. People love the comfort of the food. Uh, they love, and that nostalgia is quite important for them, actually, I think. People talk about sugar, but everybody needs sugar for energy. And uh, those fads come and go. With a new eponymous NCAA college football bowl in December 2023, and the almost 3 billion individual Pop-Tarts consumers bought in 2022, Pop-Tarts relevance in the cultural zeitgeist continues to be prioritized by its maker, Kellanova, formerly known as Kellogg's. What our fans and our consumers love is us to be part of popular culture, and it's about key moments, and what better moment than in a college football big game. Coming up with cool brand partnerships, but we're also creating them ourselves with what our fans are taking us to. Bill Post, now 96, was working at Keebler, a cookie and cracker company based in Michigan at the time. He was tasked with creating the Pop-Tart in 1963. At the time, American society was focused on convenience, and breakfast was becoming an afterthought, quickly thrown together to get kids off to school and, quote, move mothers out of the kitchen. Kellogg's, which had a cereal empire at the time, wanted to expand its reach further and was challenged with adding new products in other categories. They came to us with the idea that could we make something like this, which was a handmade sample about the size of a slice of bread, fork marks around the edges, and they said, can you make this? The focus groups and mothers didn't really know what to do with these Pop-Tarts. They put them in a toaster, sometimes they would bend, sometimes they would burn. But I had a son and daughter, 13 and 9 at the time, Dan and Rachel, who had asked me several times, Dad, bring some of those fruit scones home. So in 1964, Kellogg started testing out four flavors, blueberry, strawberry, apple currant, and brown sugar cinnamon. They wanted 10,000 cases of each flavor. But it was such a success that we made 45,000 cases of each flavor, and the production was not enough. They ran out. The shortage was just a taste at the success yet to come. The snack went mainstream the following year when it hit shelves nationwide, adding two new flavors, cherry and Concord grape, and replacing apple currant with raspberry apple. Kellogg's Pop-Tarts. Eat them in the morning, eat them in the evening. Kellogg's Pop-Tarts. Frosted Pop-Tarts, America's favorite kind, arrived in 1967. We were making ice gold on squares where we put icing on the cookies. So I said to our superintendent, take a Pop-Tart and put it under the icer, will you? And I, uh, whoa, he says, uh, that'll melt in a toaster. He came up a few hours later with uh, samples to my office, put them in a toaster, and you know, the icing did not melt. And I said, wow, this, that's good. With its success and the financial backing of its cereal business, Kellogg's was able to lead successful marketing campaigns aimed at kids with popular characters. And that focus continues in 2023. As of 2023, Pop-Tarts are sold in more than 20 standard flavors, along with periodically released limited edition versions. In October 2023, Kellogg's split into two independent public companies, Kellanova for snacks, and W.K. Kellogg's for its North American cereal division. Now our focus is on snacks. Is anything going to change? I'd say absolutely. Now, when it comes to 24, we actually have a great new innovation. It's going to be one of our biggest launches in at least five years. Snacking brought in $7.5 billion, or 60% of all sales for the company in 2022. Analysts say Pop-Tart's uniqueness has been the key to its success and may help Kellanova become, in its own words, the world's best performing snacks-led powerhouse. The biggest surprise about Pop-Tarts is how steady the, the growth has been over time. There really haven't been any other copycats that have had any success. 
there's a very small subset of brands like this that consumers used when they were young and continue to use when they're teens and then even keep using when they're adults. Half of Kelanova's net sales come from its five snacking brands, Pringles, Cheez-Its, Pop-Tarts, Eggo, and Rice Krispie Treats. In 2023, their growth continues to outpace the rest of the portfolio. The overall trend of Pop-Tarts is it's a force of nature. It's growing. It's thriving. Our consumers love it. Nearly 30% you know, of the U.S. would eat Pop-Tarts, and that is something that we're really proud of. Pop-Tarts has endured recessions, natural disasters, and shifting consumer preferences, but held steady through the years. Though not immune to rising costs, a look at the Pop-Tarts original pricing of 39 cents to 45 cents in 1964 shows that the snack has remained affordable, given the rate of inflation between then and 2023. As of November 2023, a pack of eight costs around $4.49. That's 56 cents each. Look, costs will always go up in the future. That's the way of the world. We want to make sure we do everything to keep this at the lowest cost that it should be. According to Chicago-based research firm Circana, prices rose by about 11% from 2021 to 2022, and 12% between 2022 and mid-October. While unit sales have declined, profits rose. In 2022, that's when they and pretty much the whole grocery store started raising price a lot to offset inflation which drove a lot of dollar growth. In its third quarter of 2023, Kelanova sales volume fell 7.4%. Net sales, however, were only down 0.2%, still beating analyst expectations. While Kelanova has grown its gross profit margins through repeated price hikes over the last two years, the company noted that it got, quote, an immediate lift once the company split. In North America, where we're spinning it off, we are still a very much scale player. And we're growing faster than uh, most retail is, so we provide a tailwind of growth. In 2004, a Walmart executive told the New York Times that strawberry Pop-Tart sales increased by seven times ahead of a hurricane. But Pop-Tarts has gone through some rough patches. Beginning in the 1990s, a series of house fires were linked to Pop-Tarts. Kellogg's was taken to court and later settled with a number of defendants. Yet, consumers continue to buy them. Kellogg's biggest battle, however, has been against the health food industry. Pop-Tarts aren't exactly the healthiest snack. A single strawberry Pop-Tart contains 16 grams of sugar. That's more than half of the daily recommended amount for kids and adults. Pop-Tarts boast a household penetration rate of about 28%, which Kelanova says is strong compared with other family snacking brands. The really important thing to us is that this is a snack. This is not a meal or a meal replacement. And this is something that we know our consumers love and they want to enjoy. And that's what we lean into is that enjoyment side of it. While some data suggests that the recent rise in GLP-1 drugs like Ozempic and Wagovi, which suppress appetite, could shake up the snack category period, the company isn't concerned. We don't know the penetration that these drugs will get. We don't know longitudinally what happens with consumer behavior. We know what people are saying they're doing in terms of, uh, you know, changing their, the, uh, their diets and so forth. But, you know, it's just way too early to tell. 5% of the population reducing calories by 20% is really only 1% impact on volume. So we've been very reluctant to, to change our long-term views on uh, Pop-Tarts or, or any other uh, major snacking brand. I think the brands who target younger consumers inherently will have less exposure to GLP-1 risk for sure. Competition hasn't been much of a concern either for the Kellogg family. Quaker and Nabisco had their own versions, but they are no longer sold. General Mills offered an adult version in 2008, but the product was short-lived. I think the beauty of the Pop-Tarts brand is that there really isn't any other competitor in the toaster pastries category of any meaningful size. I think their biggest competitor is fresh pastries. And now, Pop-Tarts is a part of Kelanova's push to tackle emerging markets, like Mexico and Brazil, which the company noted represented 30% of 2022's net sales. It's adding new production plants across the globe and new product features by 2026 as it hopes to expand its snack empire. Kelanova generates half of its revenue from outside of the U.S. and Canada, and in its third quarter of 2023, posted net sales growth of 17% in Europe and Latin American regions, despite falling sales in North America. I think, you know, this can travel, and I think it's a really, really interesting space for us. At the same time, we're 
really excited about where this can go in North America and just how much potential there is as we think about this is a sweet snacking brand. Fourth quarter 2023 will be the first time Kelanova stands on its own without cereal. It remains to be seen whether Pop-Tarts and its peers in the category will deliver. It's a really exciting time for us as a company. We make decisions like this so we can drive brands like Pop-Tarts. That's very, very powerful for us as we go forward. So we talk about a billion, you know, of Pop-Tarts, but the reality is we're looking for that next billion and how we start to continue, you know, that wonderful journey. I'm a very simple Pop-Tart eater. Like fresh out the pack, I don't eat it toasted, microwaved, warmed up. This is just, it's, it's gold, just like this. 